we are with our media server slash free NAS video part two, series part two. Now, some people complain that we didn't go really in depth with the free NAS installation. It's pretty basic. Uh, we're not going to go back over it, but you, you plug in a USB, you set it up, it asks you questions, you go through a wizard or you set things up. Magician, you, as the case may be. You set up your shares. It's pretty basic. All right, you're gonna have to figure that one out for yourself if you haven't already. Of course, this is the second video. Go back and watch the first one. But today, we're gonna to talk about plugins. Now, of course, the uh, the overarching theme for this series is Krista's media server because she doesn't have one. And because I don't know anything about this, so I'm learning too. So we're gonna focus on the Plex plugin. But first, let's just talk about all the various plugins that are at your disposal and they're basically one-click installs with a little bit of setup that you have with a default FreeNAS installation. So there's a lot to choose from here and uh, we'll just sort of go through them here. Of course we got this Bacula backup solution, Couch Potato. There are a lot of NZB specific applications here. Now if you don't know what an NZB is, I'm not going to get demonetized by telling you, but you should Google it because it's really cool. Uh, but we would never tell someone. Never. 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 Never use those. We've got crash plan, more backups. Uh, MB is the other home media server. A lot of people, a lot of hate for Plex in the comment section. A lot of people said MB. Maybe we'll check that out too. Um, again, uh, Sab NZB. I'm not going to talk about it, but you should look into it. We got some music. We might actually, we got uh, the Mad Sonic here. We might look at uh, serving some music too, because of course, serving music from a media server, another great use for it, along with video. That is a kind of media. What, look, mine OS, Krista. Oh, good. create and manage your Minecraft servers. Mine just went down, because I stopped paying the fee. So if you're a Minecraft scrub, I already built in for you. I think that's got a mod manager and stuff too. Oh, that's neat. Uh, your own cloud service, you want to run your own cloud, you know, the, the, the big clouds, they're not secure. Sorry. Roll your own cloud with free NAS. Uh, Next cloud we did on the Linux channel. The Linux channel was amazing. Plex, the eponymous, we're going to look at that in a little more in depth. Uh, more news readers, Sick Rage. Sick Rage. Sick Rage is more about NZBs. Again, we can't talk about that. Uh, Subsonic is probably the one we'll use for music. Uh, download Managers. Monero Miner. There's <laughs> a Monero Miner with FreeNAS. How great is that? We've also got uh, Transmission and XDM. Now these are torrent downloaders where you can just load in links. And this works the same way for the NZB stuff, which again, we're not going to talk about. And of course, we're only talking about torrents for Linux distros and things like that, right? Not anything that has a copyright related to it. No TV shows, no music, none of that. Only terrible people would do that. But the cool thing about it is these things, uh, you have to remember that the, this is taking your personal computer out of the equation. So you're queuing things up. And you can automate it too. You can actually automate it to search for keywords and things like that and automatically pull in torrents and NZBs that fit your search descriptions. It will run the parity checks. It will repair the files if they need to be repaired with the parity files. It will unpack them automatically and it will store them in subdirectories based on the archive names. All done for you, all completely automated. You come home and it's ready to go, which is really amazing. It's super amazing if you were downloading like seasons of a TV show, but you're not going to do that because that's illegal and it's wrong. Completely wrong. And that's not the use case we're for so, here at level one. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do, but again, we're going to focus on Plex right now because we're just setting up our media server. Now it's a really, there's a little bit of a complexity complexity <laughs> when you're installing these plugins. So you have to, so step one, you have to find your plugin on the list and you have to click on it. You see that blue highlight means that you've clicked on it. And okay, then, wait, 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 what do I do again? Okay, step Slow one, down. find it on the list. Okay. I've, track it with your eyes. Read it. 
That might be the hard part for some people. But. Comprehend, you can read the description. You might want to read it more than once. Then you're going to click on it, which is the blue highlight. Now, you can see you got the transparent blue highlight and the less transparent blue highlight. Important to keep those separate. So you've clicked it, you've got the less transparent blue highlight, then you're going to click install. And you wait. Now at this point, step three, you know, a little more complexity, you're going to get the are you sure screen. And you're going to remember to say okay to that. At this point, Freenest is going to go and fetch everything and download it and install it. Now Plex, again, we got a lot of hardcore people saying MB is the way to go. Plex does have some paid components and it even has like some software as a service components. But it will work just fine in the free version and that's what we're going to use. And maybe we will take a look at MB in a future video, but for the Plex haters, it is possible to use it for free. Just keep that in mind. So that's it for installing Plex. Pretty simple, but there is a little bit more to it. So one of the things about FreeNAS that you have to keep in mind is uh, these plugins, it's built with compartmentalization in mind. So you don't necessarily want your Minecraft server to have access to your video files. And so it uses something called jails. So you keep certain files in jails that are basically you keep your plugins in jails that they can only get to certain media, certain folders, certain parts of your NAS, not everything else. So the second part of setting up a plugin is deciding what it has access to. And on the left side over here, we've got our jails menu. And you see we have Plex Media Server underscore one. Now the Plex install went ahead and set that up for us. We didn't do anything there. But we do have to figure out what storage we want to put into it by clicking this add storage selection here. And of course, if we had multiple jails, we could choose it here. We've only got the one created so far. And now we're going to have to choose what the source. And I forgot we called it Tide Pod. We've got and our fanfix. <laughs> we've got our Tide Pod. We've got our fanfix folder. That's uh, we're just going to put everything in our fanfix folder. We're not going to bother creating another folder. All our media is going to be dumped in here. So we'll go ahead and choose that as our uh, source destination. Next, we want to set the destination, and this is where it's going to show up in. The, the Plex app and we've already got a media folder here so since this is our media server that's where we're going to set it as and we've got our create directory checked there please wait and here we go we have set up our slash media which is going to source from Tide Pod my phone <laughs> fix. fix that's where we'll dump our media that we want Plex to have access to so if we look on the left, we look at our plugins. We've got Plex Media Server here, but we're not ready for that yet. A little bit counterintuitive, but we need to go back to our plugins tab over here, and there's an installed plugins tab. And of course, if you're if you have strong detective skills, you can see why this wouldn't immediately work, and that's because it's off. It's got that big red off button. So we're going to click on that and launch it. Oh, it didn't turn green, it turned blue. That's awful. That ain't right. That ain't right. So now it's on. Now, of course, plugins on the top is different than plugins on the left, which, you know, that's a little counterintuitive. So now we're going to go back to plugins on the left. We're going to click on Plex Media Server. We're ready, to, we're ready for Plex Media Server, right? Let's click on OK. Oh, but wait. Nothing happened. Oh, so wait, let's, you know, like in, uh, when you were in second grade and they gave you that test and the last question was, or the, like the second question was, if you are reading this, don't answer any other questions. We didn't read and we would have failed. What it actually says is this tiny little link here says click here to access Plex. Okay. Not the best UI, but it is free. So we're not going to complain too much. And here we are. We've launched Plex. At this point, we're going to have to log in. So once you've logged in to Plex, you can use Google or Facebook if you want. You are going to get this screen and it's going to start to ask you about accessing a Plex Pass. Do you want to get to your media outside your home? Now this is the pay for part of Plex. So you might want to say no to that, disable it, whatever. It's, it's maybe not a terrible service, you know? They have, you're not really paying for any sort of extra functionality. It's just a convenience thing, right? 
No, you, there are parts of this thing that won't work with just the base. You know, all oh. we're doing is a, an in-home media server, which we can do, but if you want to stream this elsewhere, they have that service. Okay. So we'll leave it checked. Now, of course, it's automatically found our Plex Media Server underscore one, which we just turned on. So we will let it go with that. So now we've gotten to the next step. It's found our server. Now we're going to add a library, which uh, it sort of does internal cataloging. It wants you to decide what kind of thing this is going to be. I, I'm going to make an admission here. We didn't actually rip any video media. <laughs> we, uh, we got kind of lazy on that. So we're going to do music because we actually have some music and we'll name it music because we're not creative. So we set up our jail as slash media. That's what we'll feed it for our media server. And we'll add our library. Oh, that's awesome. Music. Now again, it's going to harass us to get Plex apps and do more things and all that. But we're done. We're not going to fall for it. So we're going to click that done button. And here we are. We've got our music folder. There are no items in this library, but we expected that. So it turns out my Circa 2004 IDE external hard drive with all my MP3s on it, it's dead. Surprise. Oh, uh, <laughs> what a heartbreaker. Some good tunes on that. But we did manage to scrounge up some tracks. Uh, of course, Weird Al, because that's all that Wendell has. It's a staple. <laughs> he's, he's a freak. He only listens to Weird Al. But we did. We found some Smashing Pumpkins, too. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the Smashing Pumpkins, right? So now we have uh, copied all of this media directly into our folder that we created, our Tide Pod folder that we set up to work with Plex. And of course, Plex, one of the nice things it does, it will actually go out and fetch the album information and the art and everything and set it up right here for us. So now we have a functional Plex media server running. Oh, we should also mention that uh, we transplanted Freedance into this little guy because we, we didn't want to carry around the big server anymore. And, and, just, and by we, you mean I carry around the big server anymore. This is a team effort. A team effort. Why do you have to take credit for everything? So this just goes to show you that, you know, whatever hardware you've got, we'll work with this as long as it's not too crappy. This is a Ryzen, so this is a total overkill for this. Uh, but here we are. We're serving music. Video would have been the same thing. We just copy it in there after doing that initial setup. And now we've got our Plex media server running and we're ready for a client machine, which actually uh, you're not looking at the screen from this. This is just running the server. There's a computer over here behind Krista that uh, we're screen capturing from. So we're actually acce accessing this over the network with, uh, with our Plex. Now, of course, we originally meant to show you video and um, we're showing you music, but it's sort of just, you know, just, just happened that way. But Plex does have some issues with streaming music. It'll probably be okay. But since we're talking about music, we should mention that there are plugins specifically for music. So you've got Subsonic, but you've also got Madsonic, and this is one of these, uh, you know, like in my sequel MariaDB forks where people got angry. It was an angry fork, and I think uh, I think Madsonic is the more open source version of that. So we're going to go with that one. And again, we'll follow the same. Click on it. Click install in order to get our plugin. Now, same drill, of course. Uh, in a real world scenario, you would have a jail for your media, for your video probably, and a jail for your audio. Uh, we're gonna be lazy. So we're gonna go back to our left-hand jail menu and add storage for Mad Sonic. And it is going to be the same folder. Destination. will also be, oh, I, One day when you I can type. This keyboard is so awkward. We'll also make it media, the exact same place as before. Again, you could separate the two. We're not gonna bother. And don't forget, 
that last step, going to the installed plugins, turn it on. MadSonic can be found here at the top. Our MadSonic is not secured yet, as it's telling us. So we'll log in with admin admin. Of course, you would change that immediately. So the after you log in to your client side of MadSonic, it's a matter of telling it where to look for your media. Of course, slash media, we've set up already our jail to look for this. It indexed the files. Now you can set up how often you want it to index. So you'll operate a, a, a media folder, you'll add to it, and then every day or every hour, or whatever you set up, it'll go and find the music. You can also trigger that manually on that admin page. But when we, once we've done that, we've got these uh, this side menu, and here we go, we've got our family guy. <laughs> but it didn't look like Weird Al made it. That's probably still indexing. I don't know where he is. Oh, you know what? He He's was, under there. He was categorized with Family Guy. So it's, maybe some manual folder sorting. Folder structure was a little weird on that. But we did get our disc two of the Smashing Pumpkins Greatest Hits, which is, that's all we care about. And we've got our player down here. I don't think we've got any, uh, of course we can't play copyright music. or We would never do that. YouTube would punish us hard. Even though we own this music, you can't hear it. But there it is. So, Plex. Mad Sonic, you've got your video, you've got your audio, and you essentially, with this setup, have media serving to whatever PC client you want in your home. So that pretty much wraps it up for media servers. Uh, again, this is FreeNAS at the moment, but what you're seeing on the screen is actually just another machine that's acting as a client. Now with Plex, one of the advantages is uh, you can use your game consoles. You could build a Raspberry Pi solution to access Plex. And when you're talking about video, Plex has some transcoding options. I don't know if any of those are paywalled, but uh, you can actually do the transcoding of the video on the machine that has a lot of horsepower, your FreeNAS machine, and stream it directly to the Raspberry Pi so the Raspberry Pi doesn't have to process it. But the point is, there's a lot of different clients you can use to access Plex, and that's probably true for a lot of the plugins in the, the FreeNAS solution. But that's not all FreeNAS can do. FreeNAS, FreeNAS can also run virtual machines. If you remember our original server, a lot of people made comments as like, why would you need that much RAM? That's ridiculous. You're overkilling. We don't have access to that. Well, the answer is we had planned maybe showing you virtual machines. And if we're spinning up a bunch of virtual machines, all that 72 gigs of RAM comes in really handy and you know, the processing power. So uh, stay tuned and we will probably take a look at running virtual machines in FreeNAS that you can also use alongside your new media server. Let us know if you're interested.